right, guys, welcome. Oh, this is the first episode. Yes, yeah. under the influence. First episode. <laughs> With Mikos right here in H-Town. How you doing? Man, I'm doing well. How about yourself? I am good. Mikos is a lifestyle specialist for Ciroc. Yep, absolutely. Uh, well, actually, Combs Enterprises. Co is it Combs Enterprises? Yeah. All I know is I look up and you're like on a Sean John billboard and stuff <laughs> and... Like Yo, all white. That was so random. Like, Next level. Yeah, and that and the story behind that is super random as well. Okay, so um, let's get into it because when I first moved to Houston, I've only been here for a year and a half. When I first moved to Houston, uh, Miko's, you and your counterpart were like always, I mean, everywhere yeah. doing something, and I'm like, man, the these, these guys are cool. Like, <laughs> I gotta get to know these guys here in the city. Yeah. And then it was funny because I ended up going to our station prom with your counterpart Tay, yeah. which is interesting, yeah. and then. You and I became like real cool though. You know what I mean? Like you started inviting me out to the Ciroc events to host the Ciroc events and that's how we became cool. But when I first moved to the city, you guys were like club guys. Yeah. And then like literally all of a sudden it's like a facelift and it's like, oh, there's more to um, just being in the clubs and being a promoter and being, how did that start? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, we actually met in nightlife promotions. Okay. And we met probably about three and a half years ago and um, we always kind of knew that we were special like we kind of felt like okay this we're more than just promoters like, yeah just, there was more to it <laughs> we actually shunned the title mm -hmm. promoters like we would always kind of just be like nah we're not promoters every time someone would be like okay yeah, mm -hmm. these new promoters here in houston you know and tay being from a small town called pittsburgh texas i never even heard of it very that's random. crazy <laughs> um east texas small town and you know we started working together and yeah i mean we just realized that our views on life and success and business we're all very similar mm -hmm. um granted we are very different but i think that's what has helped us be able to elevate to where we are today you know what's so interesting because when i met you when i see you you're like life like but like one-on-one -on -one, you're so like chill and yeah, like yeah, yeah. kind of are you shy it's a switch. like yeah, yeah you seem like, like you're kind of shy like yeah, yeah. people are not going to get everything from just sitting down talking to you but like when you see like Miko's out. Miko's is the life of the party. It's, it's so weird. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. is that like a? I feel like it's a switch. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, we were just talking about how Cal is going to be in town this week, mm -hmm. and um, how he works, and you know he's definitely the exact same way that you described me. Uh -huh. Like he's very relaxed, very chill. But once we're out in the open, it's like yo, it's a light switch. You right. Have to, you have to it's perform. It's go time. Yeah, it's go time. Um. So yeah, I mean, I'm I'm typically I would say I'm shy, but um. I don't I don't know. How did you how did you become a lifestyle specialist for Ciroc? Man, my story is very weird. Okay. Um, I would say it's very um it's not linear. Right? Mm -hmm. So I didn't study uh marketing or anything like that. I was actually a business major, accounting to be exact. Oh wow. And hated that, realized I would never want to work behind a desk. Um so I switched it to this uh degree called supply chain. Mm -hmm. Um and this was at the University of Houston. Graduated there and got like what I thought at the time was my dream job. I worked for like one of the top oil and gas companies in the world um, as an engineer. Oh, wow. Super random. What? Right? To go from business student to uh, industrial engineer, but the, the industries kind of intersect. Uh -huh. So did that for five years. Um, and the best thing that ever happened to me was I got laid off. Um, and I was just like, man. Well, did you go through a, did you, because I know a lot of people sometimes they get lit up, they go through a state of depression. Did you go through a state of depression or it was more like, um, what the hell am I going to do next? So, you know, when I, when I felt like I was, well, I was walking into the office and it was a weird dynamic because it was my boss and mm -hmm. the HR lady. So I'm like, okay, this is going to be my last day. Right, right. <laughs> like, this isn't a normal yeah, yeah, yeah. one on one. So, um, man, I was extremely excited. Like, I just felt like a sigh of relief. Um, because during the entire five years, I did nightlife promotions and, you know, I I started the Midas group with Tay Mitch and, you know, I, I had always had like a side hustle and a mm -hmm. passion while I was doing the oil and gas stuff. So um, it just felt like this was my opportunity to jump, but it was more like a push. <laughs> right. Was it was so God saying, like, I know you're not going to leave on your own. So let me force you out of here because I have so much more for you, but you're not going to go for it if I if you don't if you have to leave by yourself. Exactly, I get it. Exactly. Exactly. So I was real comfortable at the time. And um, it forced me to step up and, you know, really take my brand and my, my company, my mm -hmm. business uh, to the next level. Um, speaking of brands, who were some brands that you looked up to um, as you were going on this journey of being like a life? I know you didn't say, hi, I want to be a, hey, I want to be a lifestyle specialist, but there's people who actually like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or people that like really go in perfecting their craft to be just that, you it's know? It's weird. Um, 
I didn't even realize it was an industry. Right. <laughs> there is an in, there is totally it's a full blown industry yeah. and it's been around for like, you know, ten years or so. I know Kenny Burns is like one of the best lifestyle he is specialists. The lifestyle specialist. Yes, he um, is the lifestyle specialist. And, like yeah. literally. And I had the opportunity to meet with him and do an event with him and um we've been really good friends since then. But um yeah, it's it's a whole new world and I feel like, you know, me and Tay talk about it all the time how it's like a hidden gem. You know, mm -hmm. it's like the industry, especially like wine and spirits and, and, mm -hmm. and the liquor uh, side of it, because you don't really hear about people like, oh, there's these jobs available. Mm -hmm. You know, you could work for these brands and kind of and get it, paid for it and get paid for it to do what you do on a day to day. What is a lifestyle specialist? So a lifestyle specialist um, is somebody who is somewhat of a brand ambassador, but it's a step further because you kind of collaborate the the brand with your own lifestyle okay so it's not like i'm just you know doing these ads on instagram where it feels very forced and yeah unauthentic um it's it's genuine i mean for me it's kind of weird right so i'll post i'll do they'll say hey guys um and there's six of us in the country mm -hmm. all major markets and they'll be like hey guys you know we got to post this new french vanilla campaign okay well at that moment you know because we're lifestyle specialists it's it's not something that's you know hashtag ad or yeah 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 you know, right right a sponsored post yeah it's generally something that we like mm -hmm. and it's something that fits our lifestyle so that's why we have that title and um, every brand that we work with it, it's very authentic it fits with our character and who we are on a day to day. What is your biggest club pet peeve? Oh man, because <laughs> there's a lot of them. There's a lot of club pet peeves, but um man, I would have to say my number one is. When guys are in the section, grabbing the bottles, drinking out of the bottle, drinking all the liquor, did not offer to put in a dime. And you're literally like seeing these guys push the women out of the way, like, yo, yo, yo. And then they're on the gram with it. Like, it's right. their bottle. It's the, that's by far my biggest pet peeve because you'll see like the women are stuck outside or like are extremely uncomfortable. And you got this dude just doing the most like <laughs> male groupies male groupies like that's exactly what i would call it and then of course you know number hitting, two yeah hitting the last minute like yo can i get in i'm outside like oh like, yo you couldn't hit me up like a day before yeah yeah you know or, i was having know, this event like, yeah and i mean we live in an era where you know a lot of people don't understand the concept of adding value and i went on a tangent the other day on my instagram um story because people will blow you up out of the blue like yo can i have a bottle oh yeah can I have a case can i you know can you sponsor my event can you do all these different favors and i'm like yo i haven't talked to you in six months like <laughs> you know literally I mean? like i i forgot that you even existed and i'm sure you did until you <laughs> saw me on the ground but, right um those kind of go hand in hand as far as my number one pet peeve number three. Oh, number three i would say mm, I would say unhappy bottle girls. <laughs> That's definitely number three. Like somebody's gonna get mad at this, you know that, right? I, I, I feel it, but it's, it's like yo, somebody's gonna get mad at that. <laughs> my big thing about it is like yo, like you didn't beg. Nobody begged you to come bring out my bottles. Like you, this is your job. You yeah, know, you're getting paid probably a lot more than than some of these people that promote the club and actually bring the people out. You come out in this skimpy they be outfit. Heck of rude sometimes. Yeah, you got the worst attitude. A frown the entire time, like, yo, can I get some ice? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, or they take a long time to come back, like, what the hell are you doing? Yeah, they're kicking it in the back, snapping, you know, like, wilding. But then they want a girls. huge tip. You right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I always tip, you know, that's just what I got to do, but. Um, man, how much are you supposed great. to tip when getting bottle service? If you purchase bottle service, how much are you supposed to tip the girls? So it's weird. Like a lot of people, they don't understand the art of tipping. Like you're supposed to give grat. Right, right, right. right. But, um, the standard is 20%. And, you know, when you're talking about bottle service and spending hundreds of dollars, yeah. sometimes thousands, it's hard for people to understand that concept. Like, oh, I got to tip an extra 200 or But you like, shouldn't even be in the club if you can't. I mean, you shouldn't even be in the section if you can't it. afford that. And I think Absolutely. a lot of people are up front. I remember the times where we went out. It was a post about this the other day. When we went out, there was not, there's no, no such thing called a fucking section. Like there was not, like, I don't even remember being in a se like sections when I was like 20. Back in the day, yeah, there was really no sections. Like it was just like 
an uh, open space. Yeah. Couple Everybody's bars. having fun, yeah. partying. You might have a couple Genuine tables fun. here and there. Sections? What sections? Yeah, there was no table And now service. the thing is like, oh, I'm not going to a club unless I got a unless section. Have, yeah. Or a girl be like, I ain't going with him if he ain't got no section. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> it's an unbelievable switch up. But yeah, that's the way it is now. So what was that moment that you said, man, like this is all like panning out. What was the proudest moment thus far as being a lifestyle specialist? Man, my proudest moment, I would say, is my very first Rock Studios because I had the lovely Keisha Nicole <laughs> host. No, <laughs> but Me and Slim Thug had hosted that one. You, yeah, Slim Thug, y'all did a great job. Um, and then that one was really dope, too. Yeah, it was dope. It was mm -hmm. dope because I feel like it was like my entry into yeah. the, into the yeah, whole yeah, game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and being able to put on my own event. Yeah. You know, because we do a lot of sponsorships and, mm -hmm. you know, collaborations with, with different um, curators. But mm -hmm. this was like my own baby. Yeah. You know, um, and I was able to incorporate a lot of cool things like, you know, we, we, I feel like we broke Don Tolliver. Let me tell you something. That was my first time seeing Don Tolliver on stage. Like I, did, yeah. I had never seen him on stage. It was crazy. That was dope. Yeah. It was unbelievable, and his energy was, man. Yeah, it was. That night was crazy. Actually, yeah. it was so much going yeah. on. That night was crazy. It was real dope. You know, we had Dice Soho. Um, yep. Yeah, I remember as that. As well as one of my young guys, uh, Jen. Yeah. And I mean the the whole show was dope. Um, and then even what was even cool about it is we added an extra element, which was like the uh, the honoring mm -hmm. se segment where we honored uh, Sound Mob. Yeah, I remember that. So, yeah. Yeah. Th these are like legendary producers out here in Houston, up and coming. Um, and they work with like Tory Lanez, Kirko Bangs, mm -hmm. um, Kanye, Pusha T, like all these crazy artists. Mm -hmm. um, but they don't necessarily see all of the the blessings or the praise that the artists do. Right. So we right. took the opportunity to give them an award, you know, the Ciroc Studios Award, very first ever. And yeah, just... And the whole city came out for that. Yeah, like, the whole city. everybody came out. Like, new artists, old artists, like, everybody came out to that one. Yeah, it was dope. So that was definitely, like, the... The proudest moment. The proudest moment. So how do you balance it all? Because I know a lot of people in your position will fall victim to the nightlife and to after the club taking all the girls home at the club you know what I'm saying taking advantage of being a lifestyle oh specialist God. how do you balance that because you a man at the end of the day you a man I'm a woman temptation is out there you know yeah. how do you balance it so the way I balance is just you know I, I keep very uh, solid people around me mm -hmm. who were here before all of the excitement yeah. Um, you know, I'm very close with my family mm -hmm. and, you know, although I'm an only child, I have a lot of like brothers. So, um, I'm in a fraternity. I'm an alpha. Oh, okay. So like everybody that, you know, was with me prior to, I keep them very close okay. and, you know, they, they keep me humble and, you know, a lot of people, you know, jump into the mix like, oh, you know, I'm your homie now. And, right. You know, what's up? What, you know, what, what can we do this weekend? But, you know, I try to stay away from that. And Do you and, party as much now? I've slowed down. <laughs> I was about to say, you yeah. don't be like at the clubs nah, all the I'm time the unless like you that. have to be there. Huh? Unless I have to be, you know, I may do my activations. I may do my pop ups. But um, other than that, I try to stay away and make sure it's a special occasion. You, mm -hmm. you want to kind of be discreet. And, yeah. Um, give that element of excitement. Whenever mm -hmm. you do step yeah. Out. Yeah. Um, you know, with being in the nightlife promotion scene for five years, it's just I'm over it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm definitely looking forward to more of those elevated experiences, like a happy I, hour. Or experiences, dinner. man, yeah. just where we could just vibe. That's my thing. Like, I don't want to go to the club all the time. At I all. definitely just be want to have that experience I, when I, I do go out. Yeah, I don't like the club. <laughs> so, what's next for the Midas Group and Ciroc? So yeah, the Midas Group. We're uh, man, we got so much in store. Um, we're launching our vlog. Uh, we we just launched our newest campaign. Hashtag my Midas touch. Which is really cool. Because it goes with, like, Puff used to say, the Midas touch. Yeah. How crazy is that, it's right? It's crazy. And I used to look up to Puff so much. Um, Have you actually met Diddy? Yeah. Okay. Uh, how, wait, I, I, had a, I want to talk about that. Yeah. What was that like? Uh, it was crazy. Um, I actually met him All-Star Weekend mm -hmm. earlier in February. Um, and I had the opportunity to go to his house, um, have drinks with him. And, you know, everybody was partying, drinking. And then we pre-gamed uh, for the party later on that night. And, I mean, it was just unbelievable like like yo I'm with was, pup hey i was kind of quiet hey you know, i'm with I'm like, pup man, like I'm, what i don't even know more like <laughs> pup, <what's> that, <laughs> yeah i didn't want to do all that but. I know, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> but it was crazy though um we went to the club we all came back and even afterwards you know travis popped up mm -hmm. you know started djing whipped out his laptop yeah um Khaled pulled up french it was just unbelievable experience mm -hmm. and i kind of felt like at that moment it was like okay 
this is real. I'm like, in. I'm in here. I'm in. <laughs> <laughs> nobody was looking at me crazy. Right, like, who is right. this kid? Right. You know, from Houston. But yeah, I'm definitely trying to rep. You have to have a certain amount of followers to become a lifestyle specialist? Nah, not at all. So some of my counterparts, they have like a thousand followers, two thousand mm-hmm. followers. Oh, okay. So that does not even that. That's not That's more so a brand ambassador when you have all those followers. Yeah. Any advice for someone who wants to become a lifestyle specialist? <sighs> Live the lifestyle. It's so weird because, <laughs> I mean, for me, like, I feel like, you know, I'm a believer of speaking things into existence. Um, I didn't think that this was even possible. Mm. You know, I knew I wanted to get into marketing and then I knew I wanted to be like in the wine and spirits industry. Mm-hmm. So I didn't even like set my mind on like, oh, I want to be a Ciroc ambassador. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was more like, you know, I feel like I have a passion for marketing and that's the land I want to be in. Mm-hmm. So once I started putting out that energy and applying and looking for all these opportunities, um, it just kind of fell into my lap. You know, I, I actually landed a job right before that um, with a premium whiskey. I can't, I can't yeah, disclose yeah, yeah. what job it was, but um, I landed that job and literally the Sunday before I was supposed to go to whiskey training, Combs Enterprises reached out to me and was like, yo. And you thought that, that was where you're supposed to be? I quit on my first day. Yikes. My life has never been wow. the same. That's crazy. Uh, since this is, this is called Under the Influence, what's the craziest thing you've done under the influence? Uh, <laughs> the, craziest the craziest thing that I've you've done, done while under the influence. Mm, so the craziest thing I've done under the influence. I'm not a fan of strip clubs. Okay. But for some reason, um, it was like Super Bowl weekend. Um, and I ended up at two strip clubs, not only one, two strip club stops. And like fell asleep on my wings, like it was just crazy. You fell asleep at the strip club. Fell asleep at the strip club, and like my boys had to wake me up, like, "Yo, what, what are you doing?" <laughs> like you got all this ass right here, like, like yeah. Because I mean, I'm not, I'm not into all that. Yeah. you know what I mean. Like, I, I'll throw a couple ones here and there. But Your own ones. My own one. Oh, because I just a know people couple, that use other you know, people. I, I know how to recycle. You know what I mean? Like throw some, you know, pick a couple pick back, back up. Pick it back up. up no, the know. ones that didn't hit her. It's all about the look. It's about the vibe. You know. Um, but yeah, so that was probably the craziest, uh, the craziest thing I've done under the influence. Actually, it wasn't even my boys that woke me up. I think it was like the GM. Like he just tapped me like, yo, yo, yo. It's like, time to go. I can't sleep in here. Like you gotta, oh. you gotta go. So that was probably the craziest. All right, so if you listen to me every single day, you know I play this game called Conflict Cards where I shuffle the deck and I pick out one card and we have to talk about this topic. So Miko's get ready for Conflict Cards. That scary though. Like, <laughs> conflict Cards? Conflict Cards. No. <laughs> okay, this is easy. If your girlfriend made more money than you, would you expect her to pay the bills? Mm, if I, she made she made more, more money, money than you, would you expect I, her to pay the bills? See, now I'm a firm believer of you know, like equally yoke, you know, you both bring something to, to the, the table. table. Yeah, me too. So maybe not pay all the bills, but I feel like, you know. But if she made a significant amount more than you. If I dated Oprah, you got to, you got to. <laughs> You gotta hold it down, baby. Okay. You see I'm out here. Right, right. You see I'm out here. Are you quitting your job us? though if you dated somebody with Oprah's money? I cannot quit my job. That's out of line. Okay. Like you, <laughs> you, you must be some bum, like that's, nah, that's too bummy. That's way too bummy for me. I gotta work. Easy, easy. Okay. What time is considered inappropriate to come back in the house after a night with friends? Mm. If you're in a relationship. Night with friends, not working as a lifestyle specialist, but night with your friends. A night with friends, mm-hmm. I would say an inappropriate time is when the sun is out. So I mean, the sun, I, I the sun like comes up like seven a.m. And the sun like come up at seven. Sun come up at seven six thirty in the morning, and you're not back. It's a problem, you know. And I I've been chewed out personally. I'm not even gonna lie. Yeah, like, I've been chewed out for being out too late. For being out way too late. Like what? Where you been? What's going on? Like, cause nothing truthfully can happen uh-huh. positive after after two. Like, that's just a saying, right? I think it's accurate. Is it necessary to lie about how many people you have sex with? Like, when you go, when you jump into, like, a relationship or something, like, do you say the number is lower than what it is? To make yourself look better than what you are, I'm not saying that you're a douchebag. I don't think that... I, Does it never even matter? I don't think the number matters, you know? Um, yeah. <laughs> I personally wouldn't want to know, you know what I mean? Like, oh, you don't ask, partners, you don't want to know. I don't ask, you know what I mean? And then I, I wouldn't want to be asked because I don't keep track of that stuff. Who, who does that? That's well, crazy. Somebody just said they had 341 partners. I saw that. And I'm not going to lie, my homie group chat, like boys were low-key, de- it was like half and half. Some were defending him 
like yo that's only like two a month and then like, like if you really broke it down like if somebody started having sex at like 18 right like see, and you Keisha's really calculated it up i'm not she saying doing the numbers. i'm not saying that it's right but i want to know how this dude knew was 341 did he have a journal with every single name like how did you know that exact that's number bro sick stuff yeah how did you know that number bro? he had a note in his iphone right and he's been uh keeping very good track <laughs> 341 to the t like literally <laughs> that's crazy so what's next for the Midas group like what do you guys have going on yeah so we're actually developing um an influencer like program oh like, yeah. that's so, like, tight a, you could say a course a webinar yeah um where we kind of teach people who are interested in influencer marketing how to become one you know it's Dope. not about followers it's not about yeah, likes. yeah. it's like how you really step by step can yeah. be in the same positions that we are so when is that? Yeah, you don't have so a date yet. So that's launching in November. Okay, so that's my birthday month. Okay, so it's gonna be a really good uh, kickoff. Yes, our first under the influence with none other than lifestyle specialist Miko. Is it is time to toast? What do you want to toast to? Man, I got to toast to more. You know, it's the t- typical toast that we do. Okay, um, it's to more life, more success, and more greatness. There we go. More. <laughs>